Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Phone Arena and look at what we've got here. Samsung blew the roof when it unveiled the Ative Q and not only with the record screen resolution of this convertible tablet uh, ultrabook device, but other novel ideas that back to be approached with open mind as there's barely a reference point for something like it. Running HotSwap uh, Windows 8 and Android on a 13.3 inch touch display with the eye popping 3200 by 1800 pixels of resolution. It's powered by the latest uh, Haswell chip endurance athlete by Intel, all stuffed into a pretty thin and light package with uh, a crazy hinge that slides the device into this tablet, a notebook or a hybrid uh, terrace form. All of this is not for the faint of heart manufacturers and has a recipe of disaster written all over it. The first time you grab this uh, ash black Ative Q, it exudes the impression of a well-made, albeit uh, entirely plastic 13-inch Ultrabook. It is pretty thin at 14 millimeters, and the 2.8 pounds, 1.3 kilos of weight are more than reasonable for the true laptop power it holds. When closing a tablet mode, however, it has the obvious shortcoming of uh, being a pretty big and heavy one, weighing twice what your average 10-incher does. It's not that your hands will get extremely tired when you hold it with both, but uh, most of the time you need to rest it against your body for support. This form factor is somewhat more useful when reading or watching movies in bed, as you can lean it against the, the headboard of your, or your knees and it takes much less space this way. Perhaps the most interesting design part and the one with the biggest question mark in terms of durability is the hinge mechanism that allows the screen half to slide from the default uh, tablet form factor into a full-fledged notebook by snapping into place behind this chiclet keyboard. Alternatively, you can flip it around like that and use the keyboard part as simply a stand for watching movies in bed, for example, or you can simply float it like that, parallel to the keyboard in this uh, Z shape of sorts for a total of four poses that should cover most situations you might need. To allay your concerns, the mechanism feels uh, very sturdy and uh, with an oily motion at the same time. A total of uh, four hinges make this possible. These things get uh, open and closed many thousands of times and endure pressure tests before they leave the factory. So we wouldn't worry about uh, the durability, yet only time and prolonged usage uh, will tell how it will hold in the hands of the average careless user. As if to prove that the hinge will last, Samsung placed the whole processor part in this here stand behind the display part. This undoubtedly helps with cooling, as you can see, the cooling vents for the fan here when in the notebook mode. So there's airflow back and forth. And there are these uh, air vents here at the bottom as well when it's in tablet mode. So cooling is no problem, the device never gets uh, too hot. The chiclet style keyboard doesn't feature a trackpad, instead it features this uh, optical track point right here, which is uh, pretty responsive. You can just uh, use it as a mouse, tap on it, and it will be as left mouse button, but there are three mouse keys here, right on the edge uh, of the keyboard which is uh, pretty well spaced with dedicated uh, desktop mode button here on the left. In fact, uh, this column here is uh, for the volume keys as well as the desktop uh, button. So it's a bit uh, unorthodox if you're a touch typist, you always want to hit this uh, first column right here. The keys are as big as they can be on a 13 inch so typing is uh, fairly comfortable when you get used to it, though the travel feels uh, a bit shallow and uh, mushy, which is a common issue with most thin ultrabooks. Another down point is that uh, the keys aren't backlit, which can be a nuisance at night. Okay, let's look around the sides. We find an USB 2.0 port here on the right, which is covered with a protective uh, flap. There's a power key underneath it and a headphone mic combo in between. The left is reserved uh, for a volume rocker and an auto rotate switch. And above them is the RJ45 uh, Ethernet jack with a dedicated dongle and uh, a power jack 
right here on the left. These side keys are easy to feel and press without looking with uh, pretty much enough feedback. The rest of the connectivity options are a bit uh, oddly placed and you can only use them in this uh, notebook mode. This is the USB 3.0 port and you have the micro HDMI port. You can't use them, of course, uh, when the Ative Q is in tablet mode. The micro SD slot is here in this uh, stand as well on the right hand side. And there is an HD 720p capable front camera for video calling right here at the front. Last but not least, the Ative Q sports the S Pen stylus of Samsung. It's tucked conveniently here on the right, easy to draw out. So you can uh, quickly jot down things with the S Note app. You can doodle with uh, Microsoft Paint even or choose things with the stylus and annotate to your heart's desire though the queue is a pretty heavy setup to be used uh, as a clipboard like you would with uh, a straight up tablet. The 13.3 inches 3200 by 1800 pixel screen is with the record high 275 ppi pixel density for its size. For comparison even the 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro with uh, Retina display sports 220 ppi so Samsung takes the cake here and will likely keep it for a while considering the other virtues of the groundbreaking touchscreen panel on the Ative Q. Besides being the most resolute screen you can find on any ultrabook on convertible device it is also very bright and with high contrast. Viewing angles are great too with barely a horizontal or vertical shift in brightness or contrast at the extremes. Samsung uh, says the panel can reach peak brightness up to 600 nits outside under direct sunlight which would help tremendously with outdoor visibility given the screen reflections uh, are kept in check here. Our measurements showed uh, about 320 nits uh, maximum brightness inside. Let's have a look uh, at the interface now. Samsung has resolved the nascent uh, Windows Store app count conundrum in the simplest possible way. It just introduced the dual OS feature with a TFQ. You can switch to Android 4.2.2 anytime with just a tap on a screen tile or an icon and all the hundreds of thousands of touch optimized apps in the Play Store will be at your fingertips. You can have your games, your utility apps, uh, all the widgets you use on your Android phone on a regular basis can all be set up just the way like it here on the TFQ. It takes uh, a while to load for the first time, but afterwards you can switch back and forth between uh, Windows uh, and Android with uh, the tap of a button. When you need to plug in an obscure peripheral, visit uh, Adobe Flash heavy sites, play PC games, use uh, Microsoft Office or legacy programs like AutoCAD or Photoshop in their full glory. You can just switch back to Windows 8 and go with it. This is a true hybrid solution. And here we go, we locked into Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean and you can flip back to Windows 8 with the touch of a button, go back to Android when you need it and then back to Windows 8 and it's all very very quick. Need to exit uh, this Android mode completely, you just press here and you go back into Windows. Now for the problem on everyone's mind when they heard Samsung has managed to cram 4.5 million pixels on a 13 incher. Desktop and software scalability for such an amazing resolution could mean all kinds of problems and we aren't just talking about the new start button in Windows 8.1 being the size of a lentil's grain. 8.1 finally includes a new automatic DPI scaling which increases the maximum but uh, it is still not a match for the gargantuan resolution here on the Ative Q. You still have to use this combination of uh, desktop DPI scaling and text enlargement uh, in the browser for example to be able to operate the interface uh, normally at the uh, maximum 3200 by 1800 pixels. So Samsung is running the display at 1920 by 1280 full HD resolution by default. 
for picture viewing, uh, graphics work, and almost native 4K uh, video watching, for example. This uh, top-notch resolution pays off tremendously. So it's always nice to know that it's there when you need it. Don't have to switch back and forth and adjust the scaling percentages uh, manually. We have to go to 200% here to be able to operate the desktop in a more bearable manner. We have to sign out, sign in back. And we have a much more usable uh, desktop here now at 200% uh, scaling. As you can see here, even if uh, you have moved the uh, DPI scaling of the interface to 200%, if the app isn't optimized uh, automatically to do this, you'll get this picture here. This is at the full 3200 by 1800 pixels resolution. That's how our website looks on it, teeny tiny letters. You actually have to increase the zoom level of the browser as well. And we're using the stylus here. Otherwise, it's not really easy to tap with your finger. And we're increasing the browser zoom level to 200% by hand as well. And it's much more bearable this way. So that's uh, about the percentage you have to use at full resolution of scaling. So everything uh, looks much better. Okay, now we're getting to the best part. This is a 4K video from YouTube run at uh, native resolution. Of course, it's uh, buffering since that's a lot of streaming to do. And you have absolutely no problem with this device as a multimedia machine in terms of uh, video and music formats allowed at any quality with any player. The two stereo speakers provide a strong and full enough sound without being something extraordinary as they do distort the sound a bit at the highest volume level. But uh, video playback is where the TFQ really shines, thanks in large part to the beautiful high resolution display, which is on top of that very bright with high contrast ratio and excellent viewing angles. About the only thing you can do with the TFQ is watching uh, 4K Ultra HD movies like uh, this sample here at the native resolution, but you're just uh, a few tens of pixels shy at the vertical resolution from a full 4K display. So the footage is uh, of simply a breathtaking detail, as you can see, when you stream from YouTube even, the 4K channels. Amazing detail and clarity. And simply the best uh, convertible for watching movies. Without you have troubles running anything Android has to offer on a 1.6 GHz dual core Core i5 with the new Hassle architecture and Intel HD 4400 graphics. Judging from the record benchmarks, they do about 55,000 on Antutu, which is amazing. Samsung seems to have restricted the turbo mode to 2.3 GHz instead of the default for the CPU 2.6 in order to sacrifice some peak power for better battery life. As for the Windows 8 performance, the device's experience index is 5.9, as you can see. And you can rest assured the ATFQ will power through everything, save for heavy uh, 3D rendering that requires a dedicated graphics card. And yeah, it runs Crisis 3 on the lower gamer settings we checked. The ATFQ comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM and will come to you with 256 gigs of internal SSD storage. As both a powerful Windows and Android tablet uh, and notebook, the ATFQ is the most ultimate hybrid on-the-go computing solution that Samsung has managed to produce so far. It has a groundbreaking display, zippy performance, uh, easy conversion from uh, a tablet to a notebook form, and these are all wrapped up in a slim and light package that lasts a full working day on a charge. There's barely been a mobile device that offers so much. Looking around for a similarly equipped alternatives in the 1600 euros or dollars ballpark on pre-order. The Sony Vio Duo 13 is the closest convertible candidate with Haswell Core i5, though with uh, a merely full HD touchscreen and less storage. Next in line is the Lenovo IdeaPad Yoga 13, which is cheaper and flips 360 degrees to get into a tablet mode. 
but it's with much less screen resolution, battery life and storage. In short, Samsung's Ativ Q has raised the bar so high for all portable computer makers that only the price can be a deterrent to get the convertible and never look back for the foreseeable future. To sum up the advantages, it has this uh, future-proof screen with uh, record high screen resolution. It has uh, four convenient form factors in a very compact shell and it can hot swap between Windows and Android. As these advantages would point out, the unorthodox keyboard arrangement with this uh, column here on the left. It has a shallow key travel and no backlight. The USB 3.0 and HDMI ports are not reachable in tablet mode. And the record screen resolution presents issues with uh, current up and interface scaling. This was a video review of the Samsung Ativ Q from Phone Arena. For more information about this and other convertibles, you can visit us at phonearena.com.